The Rams are two and three. Have we hit the uh uh-oh point of the season? That's next on Locked on Rams. You are Locked on Rams, your daily Los Angeles Rams podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked on Rams your first listen every single day, free and available wherever you get your podcast. My name is Travis Rogers. You can follow me under that name on Twitter at Travis Rogers. Don't forget to click the subscribe button in your podcast feed so you get your Locked on Rams content every single day. And of course, we have our Locked on Rams YouTube channel as well. It's another great way to consume the podcast. Why don't you Click subscribe to that one as well. Let me remind you that today's episode of Locked on Rams is presented by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is daily fantasy made easy. Pick two to five players, and if they score more or less than their Prize Picks projections, you can win up to 10 times your money on your entry. First time users receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with the promo code Locked On. That's prizepicks.com, promo code Locked On. So, not only do I host your Locked on Rams podcast, but I'm also the host of the pregame show, the postgame show, the halftime show on the Rams flagship station ESPN 710. Was out at SoFi Stadium yesterday for the game against the Dallas Cowboys, the 22-10 to 10 loss. Ay, 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 ay. Is there a lot to get into? I wonder if there, believe it or not, I think there are a couple of silver lines, just not a ton, but there are a couple that we'll get to before the end of the pod. I also want to talk about the the – the intangible thing that seems to be missing from this team. You never really quite know when it's there, when it's not there, until all of a sudden it's like, aha, that's what it is. And so far the Rams have really struggled to find that. That's coming up in just a little bit. But let's talk about whether or not the Rams have hit that uh uh-oh point of the season. And look, when I started doing this pod um, last winter, I got brought back to Locked on Rams. Believe it or not, I was your original Locked on Rams host way back in 2016, Um, but just came back uh, not that long ago, right in January of 2022, right as the playoffs were just about to start. My first pod, I believe, was right after the um, Rams had beaten the Arizona Cardinals in the wild card game. And look, let's be honest, it was It's a really good time to come aboard. It was a really good time to talk about this team because they won all their playoff games. They won the Super Bowl. We're talking parade. We're talking about free agency. Everything that's fun about a winning team. This team this year feels absolutely nothing like the team that we saw last year. This team has really hit that point in the season where they have – it's the fork in the road, right? It is – The point in the season where you really will have an idea on whether or not this is a team that is trying to find its way with a chance to find its way, with a chance to put themselves back in a position to go to the postseason, maybe win a division and, you know, cross your fingers and see what's happening. Part of it, and we'll talk about this a little bit more later on in this episode when we get to the silver linings. The good news, one of the good news is, is is that uh, there aren't a ton of great teams in the NFC or in particular in the NFC West. But here's the uh uh-oh point, and this is why the game coming up with Carolina uh, on Sunday is such a big deal. We got to see them play against Dallas, and really it was a mismatch, quite frankly. Dallas had no offensive spark to speak of. That You have a, a backup quarterback in Cooper Rush who throws for barely 100 yards. Their offensive attack was non-existent. It was one long Tony Pollard run and a really nice catch by Michael Gallup on third and 15 to extend the drive and put them in field goal range. That was it. That was it. That was the spot. That was the the spot in the game where Dallas kind of put this thing away and they really didn't do anything offensively. That's what's so alarming about this, that your defense is playing, I'd say good, not great. They're giving up big plays like we just mentioned right there. But it's not that the defense can't get any stops. It's not that they can't get off the field. They, they've they done a, a relatively good job of that through the first five games of the season. They can't do anything offensively. 
And it's not just one thing that's not working. If it were just, you know, p- picking something around, they just couldn't get Tyler Higby engaged in the offense. All right. They, you know, they, you know, they'll figure it out. Sean McVay's a bright guy. And, you know, Matthew Stafford is a veteran quarterback who's been around the league a long time. They'll figure something out along the way. But it's not that. And this is why I think they're at the uh-oh point in the season. When you have, let's just tell you, you have quarterback, running back, wide receivers, offensive line, and let's just call it missile play calling. Okay, those are the five elements on uh, offense. 0.5 of those things are working out. The other four and a half are nowhere to be found. The quarterback play is mediocre at best, and he's doing the best he can given the situation that he's been handed, that no one could do anything much better than what he's doing, um, even though he's not doing much with it because of what's going on with the offensive line. I don't know if you can scheme around an offensive line that's been beaten up to the point that this one has. You've got Jeremiah Colony as your starting center. He's your third center. He's a guy that the Rams had released a couple of times along the way, and now he's playing arguably the second most important position on your offensive line beyond your left tackle. You've got a right guard who is your third string guy. You've got two tackles who are not holding up all that well so far through the first part of the season in Havenstein and no boom. And then you've got David Edwards at left guard. The point is there's, there's just this rush of humanity coming at Matthew Stafford. There's nothing anybody can do. Now, one of the things you could hope to do is maybe run the ball a little bit, maybe make them wait, bring it to them a little bit along the way. They're doing nothing on the ground. That whether it's Cam Akers, Daryl Henderson, anybody else that they've tried back there, nobody is making any sort of headway on the ground at all, which brings you to the other part of this, the play calling. It is predictable. It is obvious. It is quick passes to Cooper Cup, try to force it to Cooper Cup, get it all to Cooper Cup, or end around to Cooper Cup, Cooper Cup, Cooper Cup, Cooper Cup. It's completely non-sustainable. Allen Robinson that we've talked about ad nauseum since uh, the season has started is still nowhere to be found had a couple of catches for basically nothing yards uh, yesterday against the Cowboys. Tutu Atwell finally caught a pass. Yay, that makes one after a year and a half in the NFL. And Tyler Higby's been okay. So this is the part that's so upsetting, that there really isn't anything to say, hey, listen, this is working really well. Cooper Cup is working fine, but you can't run an offense with a wide receiver. He can catch 10 balls for 100 yards or whatever he had this weekend, a nice long 75-yard touchdown. Did it ever feel like the Rams were going to win that game? Did it ever feel like, okay, there they go. That's it. That's what we've been looking for. That's the team that we saw last year. That's the Sean McVay offense. That's something that they can do over and over again to put themselves in a position to be successful. Not to me, it didn't. Not to me, it didn't. And this is the part. You look at what's coming up. You got Carolina. You got to win that. You, you've got to win that game. If you're two and four after losing to a one and four team, uh, which would now make them a two and four team as well, if they you know, ultimately end up winning that game, then all, you know, I don't want to say the season's over, but you can see season over from where you'd be standing at that point. You have to beat Carolina. You have to get healthier during the break. You have to find a way to find some sort of offense. You have to find a way to get Allen Robinson to go, and you have to improve that offensive line, and then you're going to have to limit some big plays on defense. That's a lot of have-tos. That's a ton. You might be able to get one or two of those. You're going to get all six or seven. That's the part that gets very, very scary very quickly. And why do you really think the Rams are right in the middle of the uh uh-oh part of their season? That game against Dallas. Dallas didn't do anything offensively, and they were never in any jeopardy of losing that game. That's not a good sign. When the, the team you're playing doesn't have to do jack squat to beat you, just beat the you know what out of your quarterback and let your backup quarterback turn around, dink it and dunk it down the field, get a play here. And then, of course, you had the disastrous fumble. You had another block punt. There's just a whole bunch of things, a trick play that the Rams tried uh, in their own end down trying to get a, a, a get Cooper Cup on a throwback there. Just th- those are not indicators of a coach who thinks his team is firing on all cylinders. It's not an indicator that you think you can move the ball in a traditional sense. There are a whole bunch of red flags on this Rams team right now, and time is running by very, very quickly. All right, so the one thing, the intangible thing, the ethereal thing that's missing from this squad, that's coming up next on Locked on Rams. Have you tried prize picks yet? It is so much fun to do. It is so incredibly easy and it's just exciting to do it. And it's, you you don't need to think about gambling and all these things. It's daily fantasy and it's such a cool way to do it because 
You have to look at some of these projections and decide whether or not you think that that number is going to hit the over or the under. For instance, uh, Patrick Mahomes tonight against the, the the Raiders, right? Do you think he's going to go above or beyond 320 yards? Or Derrick Henry last week, is he going to get more or less than 85 yards? Cooper Cup, do you think he's going to get in the end zone or not? 0.5 touchdowns. All of these things you make decisions on, right? And if you get it right, you pick two to five players. If they score more or less, you can take the under, of course. Then their prize picks projection, you can win up to 10 times your money on any entry. You're not competing against that guy and that guy and that guy and all the guys out there. It's just you against the projections available. It is that easy, and it is super fun. Prize picks offers projections on any sport that you watch. Uh, baseball playoffs are right here right now. Of course, we've got the NFL. The NBA is getting ready to start. The NHL, you name it, it's on prize picks. Entry can be made. In 60 seconds or less, it is just that easy. It's safe and it's fast to withdraw your money. Here's how you do it. Download the Prize Picks app or go to prizepicks.com to sign up and play daily fantasy sports. And first time users, of course, receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with the promo code locked on. And if you deposit $100, Prize Picks will give you $100. If you deposit 50, Prize Picks will give you 50. Don't forget to enter the promo code locked on at sign up for an instant deposit match of $100. Thanks again for making Locked on Rams your first listen every day. Now make sure you check out the NFL Key Predictions every Friday on Locked on NFL. Locked on's local experts giving you the inside scoop on the five biggest games of the NFL weekend, including Sunday and Monday night football. Plus, betting advice from the field's leading experts, Bet Online. Follow Key NFL Predictions every Friday on Locked on NFL, available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. My name is Travis Rogers. I host the Rams pregame show, postgame show, halftime show on their flagship station, ESPN 710. Thank you very much for making Locked on Rams part of what you do every single day. So let's talk about this. And I am not the most analytically um, driven football fan out there. I understand that it it, it um, serves a purpose. It, there's some information in there. It's a good way to grade people and compare people and all these things. And it's a useful tool. We're going to do the opposite of that right now. We're going to do the exact opposite of that and talk about gut. We're going to talk about feeling. We're going to talk about just what's kind of in the air and specifically what's not in the air for the Rams this season. Um, let's go back a little bit. Let's go back to the Rams 2021 season. And I'm not talking about the playoff run. We'll get to that in a second. I'm not talking about the Super Bowl championship. We'll get to that in a second as well. I'm talking about the bad month in November that the Rams had last year where they lost three games in a row, where Matthew Stafford threw a pick six, three games in a row. And the Niners, Packers, and Tennessee Titans, not in that order, um, just really kind of steamrolled the Rams for the entire month of November. Did it feel like the Rams were a good team even when they were getting stomped I would argue that it did it felt like a team that was just kind of not firing on all cylinders but that it was going to come that there was just about you know you just need that play to kind of let everybody loosen up get another win and go back to playing the type of football that you've been playing pri previously and certainly what they ended up playing uh after the fact then you go into the playoffs, and every the everything that you needed to have go your way kind of did. And just that little spark, that little thing, when that that little I gotta have it right here. Can I can I find a way to make it happen? They did. Whether it's the love of the game route for Cooper Cup against Tampa, whether it's you catch a huge break against San Francisco when Jaquaski Tart catches, or excuse me, doesn't catch that interception, drops the ball, and then the Rams take off and come back from 10 points down in the fourth quarter to win the game. You're down late in the fourth quarter against a, a very good Cincinnati team in the Super Bowl. All of your offensive weapons, not named Cooper Cup, are either ineffective or hurt. And you still find a way to get it done. That little spark, that little thing, that little, hey, we're okay. We're going to find a way to make a play. We're a good team. We're going to get the right play call at the right time. The big star is going to step up at the right time. Matthew Stafford's going to hit Cup with a no-look pass at the right time. All of these things, they're just kind of in the universe. You felt any of that so far this season? And, and more specifically, let's talk about what happened yesterday uh, at SoFi Stadium, the Cowboys and the Rams. Was there ever a moment? Now, honestly, I know it's super exciting when Cooper Cup takes it 75 yards, uh, makes an unbelievable, you know, fingertip catch and turns the corner, leaves Trayvon Diggs in his dust. And just it was a great play. No question about it. 
Did you think the Rams were going to win the game? I didn't. Did you think that the Rams were going to also? Oh, okay. There we go. Here we go. We're off to the race. And now I'm going to run it. We're going to throw it. There's Allen Robinson. There's Tutu Atwell. There's Higby. There's Cup. There's uh, Akers. Boom, 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 boom. Oh, Aaron Donald stripped it out. Okay, pick it up. Go back the other way. It, okay, this is the turning point. Never at any point this season have you had that feeling. Even when they're winning games, even when they beat Atlanta, even when they beat, you know, the team that they love to beat more than any of them, uh, the Arizona Cardinals. Has it felt at any point like, ah, that's the Rams. There it is. They caught the other guy flat-footed. They called a play that no one was expecting. They executed a play perfectly at a time that they absolutely had to have it. There's been a play here and there, but has there been any sort of, you know, they're going to be all right. They're going to be all right. Did it feel like they're going to be all right against Buffalo? Nope. Did it feel like they were going to be all right against uh, the San Francisco 49ers? Not to me, it didn't. And certainly yesterday, Dallas has a great defense. Dallas's offense is really mediocre at best. And it never felt like the Rams were going to be able to get on track enough to make Dallas's lack of offense become an issue. They just can't move. There's no spark. Matthew Stafford is running for his life. Everyone on offense not named Cooper Cup has given them somewhere between nothing or less than that. You, the, the, Sean McVay's play calling has become predictable. The Rams' offense, when, when you start having to go to fake punts and trick plays uh, to try and, and generate more than 10 points in a game, you know that you're really struggling. You know that you're searching for answers at this point. And that's the part, for me, that, that is the most alarming. Ne never mind the schedule, which we'll talk about later on this week. It's about to get even more brutal once you get past Carolina. Um it doesn't feel like that thing that you need to, to kind of light the fire is there. That this feels more like the 2019 season after they went to the Super Bowl where they just, you know, it's a, and, and this doesn't mean that they're going to go, what do they have, two wins right now? They're, they're not going to go two and 15. That's not the point. The point is that this is a team that's trying to compete for Super Bowls. This is a team that's trying to rediscover what they had a year ago. They obviously don't have that. They obviously don't have the personnel that they had a year ago. Obviously, being a little top-heavy has come back to really bite them in the butt so far this season. But just to be in the mix, it feels like it's going to be a struggle just to get into the mix. And right now, that struggle is real. That spark is missing. And it's something that they're going to have to find and find very, very quickly Otherwise, this season could be a slog to the end. And you're talking 500, maybe sneak into the playoffs. That's certainly what it feels like at this moment. All right. So while a bunch of things did not look good yesterday, there were one or two along the way that actually were a little bit of a silver lining moment. We'll talk about those coming up next. Before we do that, let me ask you, have you tried Built Bars yet? Are you depriving yourself of one of life's great joys? Guess what? As always, new flavor, delicious, indulgent cookie dough covered in chocolate. That's right. Built Bar has done it all over again. Let me introduce you to your new favorite. And by the way, this is not just your potential new favorite. It is the number one uh, Built Bar flavor in my household right now. The kids go crazy for it. My wife loves it as well. The cookie dough chunk puffs, the light and chewy texture that you love, real cookie dough chunks. And of course, because it's Built Bar covered in 100% chocolate and because it's Built Bar, it's 100%, or I should say, it's healthy for you as well. 160 calories, a whopping 15 grams of protein, and they are delicious. Run to Built.com to snag a box for you, your family. Put it in your car. Put it in your desk. Put it in your back pocket. It's the perfect little treat. Here's how you do it. Go to Built.com, use the promo code LOCKED15, and get 15% off of your order. Let me tell you that one more time telling you all the coconut almond just saying that's still my go-to one go to built.com use that promo code locked 15 and get 15 percent off of your order use that promo code locked 15 thanks for making locked on rams your first listen every single day free and available wherever you get your podcast click that subscribe button in your podcast feed click that subscribe button on our locked on rams youtube page make sure that you're listening to us every single day all right um Bad week for the Rams. Bad season so far for the Rams. Let's be honest, two and three through the first five games. Um, not exactly what anybody was expecting. Not exactly what anybody inside the Rams organization, I'm sure, was looking for. But that's the reality of it. You are a, a football team that is in search of some answers right now, in particular on the offensive side of the ball, in particular uh, on, on special teams as well. Another block punt on Sunday. That makes two through five games. That's certainly not good enough. Um, that being said, 
there are some things that can give you at least some hope moving forward. A couple of silver linings along the way. Let, let's start with this. They are two and three. The rest of the division is two and three, other than San Francisco, who's three and two, and you still get to play them again, so you can square your account with them. It's, it's a big ask, but all you can ask for at this point is the opportunity to do it. That's coming up uh, in about three weeks. Um, the other part is no one in the NFC seems to be running away with anything. Philadelphia is five and zero. Oh, um, the Giants and Cowboys are four and one, but it feels like all three of those teams are going to have a market correction at some point. Not that they're not good, not that they're not going to continue to win some games along the way, but I don't think that you're going to have a, a, a situation where you're looking at it, an Aaron Rodgers team or a Tom Brady team and say, "Oh my gosh, that's a thirteen and four team." Uh, you're going to have your hands full. I don't think that's what it is. The other part that you can, you know, kind of talk yourself into is that offensive line hopefully will get better. It will get more healthy. Brian Allen will come back. Col Coleman Shelton hopefully will come back. That You'll start to see the offensive line that they were hoping to get at the beginning of the season uh, together on a regular basis, and hopefully everything calms down right there. It gives Matthew Stafford a little bit of time. So there's enough time left. There are an, an, enough games on the schedule left for that to happen. The other part that gives me at least some sense of comfort is the opponents that you've played so far, and especially the opponents that you've lost to. Fact of the matter is, the Rams have played five games, two against teams that are somewhere between average to less than, and three games against teams that I think are, and the league has shown so far, are pretty good. You beat the two bad ones, and you've gotten housed by the three good ones. It's not, it's not perfect, but it's also, you're not out of it, right? that when you look at the offense and where it has struggled, it's against Buffalo, San Francisco, and Dallas. Those are probably three of the top five defenses in the league. And with San Francisco and Dallas, it's probably two of the top three. These are defenses that are incredibly effective. And you put them together against an offensive line that is injured, an offensive line that hasn't had a lot of time to work together, these are about the results that you would expect to get. I think that that will get better. As you move through it, you're going to get Seattle a couple of times. You're going to get Denver. You're going to get the Las Vegas Raiders. The Chargers are, are a good team, but who knows what that looks like. You, you know, Green Bay all of a sudden looks like a team that's in transition, in flux a little bit. So there are some opportunities moving forward. N none of those are easy. Division games and everything else, Christmas Day against the Broncos, you're going to have your hands full a little bit there. But at the same time, there are some opportunities. You do not have – you have San Francisco one more time. You're not going to see Buffalo. You're not going to see Dallas, at least not anytime soon. So there are some opportunities there to get going. Your defense has been good. It has not been great. It has not been perfect. They've given up a lot of big plays, but Jalen Ramsey is playing at a high level. Aaron Donald is playing at a high level. Bobby Wagner has been about what I think most people would have thought when he came over right there. So there are some positives on this team, but not nearly enough to offset everything that has not worked out on the other side of the ball, in particular, Allen Robinson, that offensive line, and everything not named Cooper Cup. All right, that's going to do it for this edition of Locked on Rams. Thanks for making us your first listen every single day. Now make your second listen, the Peacock and Williamson NFL show. Brian Peacock and former NFL scout Matt Williamson giving you expert NFL analysis in less than 30 minutes. It's free and available wherever you get your podcast. Until next time, whose house? It's Locked on Rams house.